We are joined live now by Harris Mojadidi from the Afghan Coalition. You have family back in Afghanistan. I'm I know this is very emotional for you right now. Uh, you also have a cousin at the airbase in Qatar. When was the last time you heard from your family and what are they telling you about the situation? Thank you first for having me on uh, this evening. So I've been in contact with my family members over the course of the last uh, day or so, and they remain hopeful, but the situation is dire. It's deteriorating really quickly. My family members are what we would consider Afghan allies, and so they have provided service to our government. And again, the situation on the ground, it's it's ever evolving, but there's a lot of fear, there's concern, and you know, with with the August 31st deadline in place, you know, the hours and moments are, are precious. And I so that's where we're at now. Absolutely terrifying over there right now. Harris, do they have special um, identifications or special visas that they can show troops to let them on some of these evacuation planes? They do, but the problem is the getting into the airport. It remains mm -hmm. dangerous. I saw yesterday there was um, suicide bombings and, you know, we've lost servicemen. And it's the situation is just so dire. And so even getting to the airport itself is dangerous and, and risky right now. So what can be done? Is it a matter of getting a hold of, of people that can help facilitate the families getting through? What can you do? What have you, have you been doing? I've been doing um, is I've reached out to so many different offices, whether they're congressional offices, nonprofit aid organizations. Um, it's, it's, it's a deteriorating situation. But what I will say is that we should remain on the ground until everyone, whether they're U.S. citizens, green card holders or Afghan allies can get uh, evacuated safely. And so that, that's where I'm at and I'm continuing to push that. Our community is continuing to speak to our local um, federal elected officials and they, we keep urging and pressuring them to, to remain in place as long as possible. There are so many people at home right now wondering what they can do to help. They feel so helpless. They're seeing, hearing stories about families like yours or seeing the images on the news. What can they do? Is it a matter of sending money? Is it a matter of, of offering their services? Yeah, well, um, thank you for bringing that up. I think right now you're going to witness in the coming days, weeks, and months, we're going to see a new wave of refugees from Afghanistan. And for those that are watching at home, this is not new. My parents are refugees from Afghanistan. They came here about 35 years ago. And so this isn't anything new for our community, mm -hmm. but uh, for, for the folks watching at home, super important. There are a lot of resettlement agencies right here in the Bay Area. The Jewish Family and Community Services is one that the Afghan Coalition is part partnering with, so I would recommend that. I would also say that as these refugees come, right, they need to be welcomed. We need to ensure that we make them feel safe and comfortable. And I want to remind the, the viewers at home that there's something very distinct about this particular wave of refugees. They have been in service of our country. They have they have worked to support our armed service members. They've taught, they've worked in, in American institutions. So they share our values. They share our ideals as Americans. And I, I want really the viewers at home to be aware of that these are people that share our same values as Americans. We need to do everything we can to make them feel safe. I'm really proud of my community, uh, the Afghan coalition, the communities in Fremont. We're really rallying together, working with really all uh, refugee and resettlement agencies in the East Bay. We're working with our local, state, federal elected officials to really ensure that whatever services we can provide to this incoming refugee community, we can. And I would say to the viewers at home, really important to write to your congressional members, write to your senators. You know, we need to keep the pressure on this administration to allow more refugees to resettle. We need to get everyone that can and wants to flee, wants to, to escape and seek refuge from Afghanistan, we need to get them out. And that, and I would say on that too is right now for our community, the Afghan American community, we're in pain right now. We're in pain. We're holding on to so much, Our whether it be our own trauma from our own arrivals into this country or whether it's the pain, the anguish of not knowing what is going to happen to our family members at home. And so I would say for anyone watching home, if you have friends, community members, colleagues that are Afghan American, please you know, hold us up, provide us that extra grace and love because, you know, we are going through a lot right now as a community as we try and do everything 
to, to help our loved ones, you know, seek refuge, right? These are good people that right. share our ideals and our values. And I, I think that's super important. Before you go, Harris, I know this is probably a, a complicated answer to a very complicated question, but there's so much debate over how the situation unfolded. Many, including the president, saying the situation was inevitable no matter when U.S. troops decided to leave. What's your opinion on that? You know, what I will say is that policy question is a privilege that my community doesn't have right now. We can't debate about what happened, what the drawdown should be. Right now, we are in full-on reaction mode. We There are people whose lives are at risk, both in Afghanistan and, and as they reach these bases and our armed servicemen. So we need to do everything that we can to ensure that we get those people out right now because the decisions have made and there's gonna be time to really talk about the policies and what should have, could have happened. But right now, that's a privilege that we in our community don't have because we are so desperate to ensure that our loved ones they, they get to safety, right? It's it's very simple. It's it's they're not safe. And what happens on August 31st, when that veil falls down, we don't know what's gonna happen. And so mm -hmm. I just it's so important that we stay and help as many people that need to escape uh, we to, that we help to, them out. To get to safety, no question. Harris, thank you so much for sharing your story. We really appreciate it.